Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's newsletter is why your R-fast sample sizes are costing you a fortune. Okay, so what are we talking about now? I'm talking about new product introduction. Um, your ability to sample, make prototypes, that type of thing. Um, take samples right at the beginning of the process before you run in production. Typically what's going to happen, you've designed a product, you've designed a process. The performance of that product and process is locked in by all the decisions you've taken. So in other words, you are going to get a distribution. Maybe you're going to get a distribution that looks like this. It's not particularly capable. We'll say that you're going to get, I don't know, 3%, probably a little bit too big there, but we'll assume it's 3%. We'll assume that you're going to get 3% in the tails. This is what's going to happen to your process when you go live. In other words, this is what production is going to look like for the next 10,000, 100,000 units. It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you 6% of everything that you're producing. Okay? Now, it'd be great to know that before you went live so that you don't make the mistake of going live and then having to deal with the problem once you've created it. But of course, in order to do that, you've got to collect data. You've got to take samples, you've got to run pre-production runs, things like that. Um, and typically, what do people want to do when they are doing pre-production, when they're making samples? Well, they want to keep the sample size nice and small. So what do they do? They take a sample size, maybe, five or ten samples, maybe five to ten prototypes, maybe ten probably for prototypes. It's probably a little bit uh, optimistic to be honest. Now, in other words, what you're going to do, you're going to sample out of that black distribution. Now look at it. Where does most of the results land? In fact, there's a huge portion I think they say up to 70% is going to land in the big fat bit in the middle here. So 70% of your results are going to come in that big fat section. Now what do you do? Well, you're trying to save money. It's not saving money. You're being half fast. What you do is you take five from that black distribution. Well, look, if you take five, where, do, where are they likely to come from? Well, they're more than likely going to come from where lots of data is sitting. So here's your sample here. What does your sample tell you? Your sample tells you, yeah, everything. Everything is good to go. So what do you do? You undersample now. By the way, the sample size you should have taken, 30 to 50. That's all we're asking, because you know what? 6% of 10,000 units is going to be a hell of a lot more than 30 to 50. We just needed to spend a little bit of money and not be half arsed at the beginning of the process. But now we've gone for five. Five has told us that the process is okay. Because what happens? We say, let's run the process. Let's tell the customer we are ready to run. We switch the process on. And what do we switch on? We switch on the 6% defect rate. And maybe after a few weeks, we begin to realize that the 6% defect rate is sitting there. We can't possibly ship. We can't possibly ship to the customer now. 
without checking all of that production. So what do you have to do now? Now you have to take a sample size, which is 100%, because you don't know where the 6% are gonna sit in the ones that you're manufacturing. So what have you done? Well, you undersampled when it was really cheap, when all you'd gotta do was take 30 to 50. This was cheap. You undersampled when it was cheap. Now what you're doing is you're oversampling because you're not taking 30 to 50, which you could be doing by the way. You're not taking 30 to 50 to confirm the production now. You're having to check every single one. And now what you're doing is you are oversampling. And you are oversampling when it's expensive. This is costing you fortunes. You've got expensive equipment. You've got expensive people checking everything, whatever it happens to be. Not to mention the fact you've got 6% rework, 6% remake, or 6% scrap. You are undersampling when it's cheap. You are oversampling when it's expensive. That is because you are being half arsed on your sample sizes. Take proper sample sizes in the proper place and save your company an absolute fortune. Sample sizes make you money.